it's kind of amazing this morning is that it's gotten so cold that depending upon where I place my camera, I can't quite get my door closed. <laughs> you know, it's kind of kind of reminds me of God too. You know, God has placed you somewhere. He's got a purpose for you. You know, you're you're you. Isn't that a surprise? Did you figure it out? You're you. <laughs> wow! If you needed me to say so, no, but the reality of our life's experiences, the things that God has brought us through and is taking us through in this journey we call life, has made us uniquely designed for a purpose. And sometimes people will come into your life for a short period of time and. They may accomplish their purpose and go on to do those things that God has called them to do. I know for myself, I uh, have a new service that, you know, I had a overwhelming burden, you know, to get it launched and off the ground. And, you know, I, I had some other people that I was taking on as editors, sharing with them about how, you know, I wanted them to do some posting for music and for other things. And, and it worked out pretty good, you know. I had to be a managing editor because I knew what the Lord wanted, you know, in regards to it. So they were they were co-administrators, so to speak, you know. And a lot of people like that, you know, title stuff where, you know, serving the Lord is a challenge because you, you pray over everything you do. You know, you really want to please the Father, you know, when you're serving Jesus. And that can be challenging when you are in leadership positions and you have other people that are whether they know it or not, you're accountable for and responsible to either answer to the Lord for or answer for their actions. And for me in the news service, it's always a challenge because a lot of people have agendas. You know, we, we all do. We're human beings. Each one of us has a peculiar bias or a design and purpose that we might have flaws or feelings that we might be operating by more so than what maybe the Lord has done in us in ministry because the only way to learn about ministry according to Chuck Smith <laughs> is to do ministry <laughs> you just go out there and make your mistakes and let the Lord lead you <laughs> more or less you know you should have some kind of training you know might help but God can use anybody you know you don't have to have any training at all so for a season it was it was good you know to have this person help me but I had to finally make a decision when, you know, this time is coming that has really been pushing people to the extremes. They get caught up in politics and they get caught up in in personal biases or prejudices. And you have to decide for yourself, you know, whether it's a benefit, some of the friends you have or some of the ministries you're involved in or some of the quote unquote groups that you participate in. Or whether you need to kind of cut that off, you know, you need to prune the branches of it, you know, and let it go and be replanted into its own pot and to accomplish its own purposes. But for yourself, sometimes you need to walk away, you know, to go do something else, to go be what God wants you to be. And for me, I had to do that as even as I have to do that here where I live, is that God has taken me through a time of change where I had to prune and refine a lot of the ministry on the internet and it's become highly successful. I mean, you can always tell when you do something in the Lord that God has been wanting you to do because on the one hand, you, you feel the burden like something's not quite right and then when you either change it, correct it, or cut it off in some way, it's like, wow, there's a huge difference and you, you see the change and you you feel it, it's like, wow, that is so cool. And so you kind of know the difference right away. And when that happens, it's like such a relief, such a blessing, as it were, to go ahead and get done what it is that you wanted to accomplish in the first place. So for me, it's been a time of retrospection, much like this year always is, is that this time of year, I always think about it, what I'm doing and how I'm wanting to accomplish it. And Unfortunately, that also means that I have to move because in the place with where I'm living, 
my very living arrangements have become challenging in the sense of overbearing rules and regulations and outrages and just more so even though sadly my landlord may be a Christian, you know, I had to decide, well, you know, just because a person's a Christian doesn't mean they're right. God's leading me onward, so gotta go. You know, same thing might be true for you in ministry, is that as a leader or as a servant, you may have to at times change your church or change your ministry or, you know, remove and ask to remove, you know, different people that might be hindering your growth or your accomplishment of what you Always be faithful in what you're doing and seek the Lord, you know, and don't try to cause aggravation or division, but try to bless someone if they're going. Because the song that we sing really is true about all Christians, whether you accept them in their personal relationship of how they're growing and where they're growing, but a friend is a friend forever if the Lord's the Lord of them, and a friend will not say never, for the welcome will not end. Though it's hard to let you go, and the Father's hands will know that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. The love of God constrains us and causes us to bear one another's burdens to a point, and then we need to set them free to accomplish what they would do in the Lord. So if you have yourself in conversation with God about something that you have some consternation, which would which technically means conflict or or concern that doesn't seem quite right, well, take it to the Lord in prayer, you know? And don't just expect God to leave it there, you know? Sometimes God wants you to take a step. And if you do, maybe he's telling you to go different directions, kind of like Paul and Barnabas, although they did pretty dramatic. But Try to make it not so drama, or like a drama queen, but make it more like a blessing and an encouragement for both parties to go their separate ways. Because someone may be sent by the Lord to go north, and you may be sent by the Lord to go south. And it doesn't mean one is right and one is wrong. Though you may have differences of ministry and differences of application by the Holy Spirit, God still wants you to be one in the Spirit and one in the Lord. It's just he's got something unique and different for you than he does for me. So never be afraid to follow the Lord's leading and some of the challenges that there are in stepping into ministry and walking with it. Never be afraid to change what you're doing, to rearrange it, to reevaluate it, to take it in a different direction. Because as you go in that direction, I, I like to say it this way. I run just as hard and as fast as I can in any ministry. Because I know that if I'm moving fast and hard, damn, when I hit that wall, there's no doubt that it was a wall. But you see, if you're kind of like walking along and trudging and kind of fearful, and you go, uh, should I or shouldn't I? Maybe, maybe this, maybe that. You know, oh, but it looks like this, it looks like that. Well, you know, that might work for some people. It doesn't work for me. Because you see, if I doubt, I have a problem with faith then. Because to me, doubt and faith just conflict with each other. So I'd rather commit my way unto the Lord, trust also in Him, and let Him bring it to pass, and then trust in the Lord with all my heart, and lean not my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge Him, and let Him direct my path, so that if He tells me to go, I'm running. If He tells me to walk, then I'll slow down and walk. But until He tells me to walk, hey, I'm running just as fast as I can, you know, and holding on to His hand, you know, so that way I can either hit that wall, or go fully, purposefully, passionately, with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, doing and accomplishing what he would have me to do. It's the only way I know how to do it. My mother used to call it full hog or nothing. You know, I was all the way in or all the way out. And for me, that was what repentance was all about. You go all the way in one direction, turn around and go all the way the other. Repentance, turning 180. So, I like to look up. I like to listen. I like to ask God. I like to get it on too, you know, get get it on and get moving with it. So, though I have to take my steps slowly to move here, and to, sometimes when I'm dealing with people to give them enough chance to do what they're going to do, there are times that I've been in ministry where, you know, I've had to deal with pastors even, you know, where it's like, you know, if a pastor is off and you're working with them in ministry, 
and you've prayed, and the Lord is just kind of like saying, you know, slowly, you know, you need to leave. You know, you, you don't leave them high and dry and, you know, backbite them and cause division. You just slowly walk away. You know, you peacefully try to do the best that you can for them and then go away from them and leave them with a blessing. I know for myself, I have a few pastors that have been greatly challenging to me that I have walked in my integrity. And praise the Lord, I was challenged directly face to face in massive confrontation and didn't, didn't fail, you know? I mean, I allowed myself to be weaker so that in faith you appear the weaker that the A-type personalities may assert themselves and be who they need to be, I guess. But you leave it in the Lord's hands, you know, and thinking of those times, I, I am blessed that I can say that I learned that a long time ago, thank God. You know, and there have been times that, you know, yeah, you know, I've been surprised by sometimes carnal Christians that have, you know, kind of like nailed me to the, you know, back, you know, so to speak, and gone through those experiences, but you can't let any of those things bitter you. you got to let them better you. Because the better that you are in loving them, looking back, and even at the time, the more God is able to use you to effectively touch people's lives. And then he takes you to a broader or bigger sphere of influence. And it's not that we want to be big and lifted up or holy or something, but don't you want to be more like Jesus? I mean, wouldn't it be fun to kind of like see him and work in us to be more like him. For me, that's what it's all about. You know, it's, I want to be like God's only son, even if I'm the only one. I want to hear when I'm done, you do love my son. And that's my motivation, you know, my joy, my anticipation of all that I want to do. I don't want to be a jock superstar that gives it all the glory to God. You know, I don't want to be some, you know, the best that there was at some one thing. I just want to be God's son. You know, I just want to do what he wants me to do today. And tomorrow, hey, he can take care of tomorrow for me. And yesterday, he's taught me through it. And I'm glad for it. And I enjoyed it. And I participated in it with all that I had. And I gave it all that I got. Be Christ's bond servant. Now, the Lord is a spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Paul said that we would not become the slave of anything or anyone but Jesus Christ. Everything is lawful for me, but I will not become the slave of anything or be brought under his power. 1 Corinthians 6.12 He also said if I had been trying to be popular with people, I would now I would not be I would not now be a bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ. See Galatians 1.10 if you let other people control you, you will not fulfill the call of God on your life. If you let their rejection frighten you and change your focus, you won't do what God wants you to do. Be a slave only to, a, to God and a servant to people on his behalf. So you see, it's not about getting this power of the Holy Spirit and going out and blasting people and, you know, blessing them as though you've got the ability to or cursing them as you think you can, or casting out demons as you think you've got the capability, or rather it's kind of serving God, you know, with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. It's letting God direct you every day of your life. It's being aware that you are someone's servant. Now, if you're a servant of the Most High God, if you're a servant of your Father, then He will train you up from a servant to a son, and he'll make you into the image of his son, which was so submissive that he thought it not, he thought it, I'm trying to think how to say it in the way that it says in the King James, and it says that he humbled himself, becoming a man that he thought it robbery to be made equal with God, but that he humbled himself that he would not be considered that, but that he was made lower than the angels in that he would be an obedient servant unto his father. So that when he looked and he saw only those things that his father was doing, then 
his father would look down upon him and say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In other words, this is the one that I accept. He is the express image of who I am. He is I am. He is as me. So a lot of times, you know, when you see your son, you know, it's kind of sort of the same, but not quite because you see, your son could go through a rebellion stage and all kinds of things and not be quite doing what you want him to do. But the Son of God did only those things that were pleasing to his father. So he was an example of a true son, an image of the father. And as God, Jesus is our example. So we have in him the way to be unto others whom Jesus said he came not to condemn, but rather to save. And he was willing to lay down his life for them. So we too, likewise in ministry, ought to bear one another's burdens. And then when it's time, if the Lord says, let them go and then bless them as they go and encourage them in their ministry, even after they are gone. For you don't know, the Lord may bring you back to them or them back to you. And you may be a blessing for them. But I hope you don't become a curse. <laughs> I hope that their memory of you, though it may be challenging at times, would be one of reconciliation and not reckoning. Because really, it's easy to stumble and fall over someone else's faults when you don't see your own. And then sometimes even when it is their faults, you don't have to fall on them. Sometimes you just have to walk around them. I hope for you today that if you are being challenged to move because God is telling you to go, or he's challenging you to change your ministry or change something in your life, if you have to say you have to go tough love on a son or a child, or you have to stick it out in some unwanted marriage because you think, you know, well, the Lord, you know, I want to divorce him, but the Lord said no, you know, and so God's telling you for some reason to stick it out. Then I pray that you can. But if God is telling you to go <clears throat> and do whatever it is that he's telling you, then rest assured that if he's telling you to do it, then he will bless you through it and he'll take you to it so that you can pass through by way of escape that temptation and trial you're going through and come out the other side with joy, rejoicing in how God, your Father, delivered you.